Hey guys, in today's video, we'll be going over thermoregulation, which is an animal's ability to maintain a constant internal environment regardless of its external environment. From there, we'll be talking about separate, concurrent, and countercurrent flows. After that, we'll be discussing the mechanism behind each flow and how they differ from one another. An animal's ability to transfer heat between vessels, such as blood vessels, is dependent on distance and flow direction of the vessels. As a result, we can have three different arrangements. We can have separate flow, concurrent flow, and countercurrent flow. We can think of heat transfer such that heat will always transfer as long as there's a concentration gradient between the two vessels. In separate flow, vessels flow in opposite directions but are not in close proximity to each other. As we can see, the vessels cannot form a concentration gradient due to distance, and as a result, no heat exchange can occur. Concurrent flow occurs when vessels are flowing in the same direction in close proximity to each other. If we look at our graph, notice how both vessels quickly reach equilibrium early on, and this prevents any further heat transfer from occurring along the rest of the blood vessel since there is no concentration gradient. As a result, heat transfer can only occur in a portion of the blood vessel, making this method not efficient. Countercurrent flow is the most optimal method of heat transfer and is commonly found throughout nature. This arrangement occurs when blood vessels are flowing in opposite direction in close proximity to each other. Rather than quickly reaching equilibrium like in concurrent flow, Countercurrent flow maintains a concentration gradient. This allows for heat exchange to occur across the whole entire distance of the blood vessel rather than just a portion. We will now use beans to show heat exchange, or for this example, bean exchange between vessels in concurrent and countercurrent flows. In concurrent flow, we will have vessel 1 start off with 8 beans in the first box, and vessel 2 start off with 2 beans in its first box. Notice how both sections quickly reach equilibrium in subsequent boxes and each box contains five beans, the same number of beans throughout. As a result, bean exchange can only occur in the first box, so three beans will transfer from vessel one to vessel two, leaving each vessel with five beans in box one. The following sections will remain with five beans since there is no concentration gradient to drive any further bean transfer. In real life, this method would be inefficient since heat exchange would only occur in a small portion of the vessels, leaving the rest of the vessels with no heat transfer whatsoever. In countercurrent flow, we have vessel one and vessel two moving in opposite directions. This arrangement is optimal because it sets up a concentration gradient throughout the entire length of both vessels. As a result, bean transfer can occur throughout the entire length of the vessel with one tr bean transferring from each box. In nature, this is optimal since a concentration gradient is maintained, ensuring that transfer continues throughout the entire length of both vessels. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.